Let's just be real, though. Spencer, by the time Spencer and I retire or by the time he retires, Social Security is going to be gone, right? Like it's running out. <laughs> I talk with a lot of younger clients, too, that they always say, oh, I, I'm not even planning on Social Security. Who cares about that? Yeah. And I stop them and I'm like, don't say that loud enough because a politician one day is going to hear you. We want to talk a little bit, obviously, about retirement today. And you guys, I hear, are the experts, right, Stuart? We like to think that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Stuart, Jared, Spencer. They're, you're going to tell us all we need to know about retirement. We'll do it. Sounds okay. good. That's the plan. Love it. So um, a few things that I want to just touch on first, because something that we need to be thinking about, aside from just retirement, right, and all of these things income streams apparently that we need to think of social i can never say this social security <laughs> social security but social security you nailed still, it or yeah. social Anyways. five social. times social, social. social yes. security yeah what do we need to know about this when do i take it out is it before i retire after i retire what does my spouse have to do what do you yeah, think yeah when to take it depends on uh, your situation. So um, okay. I think a better question is to make sure that you qualify for it first. Yeah. There's a lot of people that might work for government agencies that may not participate and, and contribute into Social Security. A lot of people don't know that you have to uh, work at least 10 years or gain 40 credits worth of credits, I guess, 40 quarters, 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 there quarters 40 quarters of credits before you are eligible for Social Security. Okay. And so if you're working for an employer that not, most employers are, when you say yeah. most employers yeah, are. Yeah, most everyone, if you're working, is paying in. I think a lot of times, too, it's self-employed. You mm -hmm. have to make sure you're paying taxes in to the Social Security in order to qualify to then take Social oh. Security. So if I'm so, self-employed, I need so to So if you're self-employed, okay. you need to understand with what your tax situation is within that business that, again, you are paying Social Security tax, and that's what's going to qualify you then to yeah. uh, receive a benefit. Okay. Good grief. Yeah, so you have to make sure that you qualify for it. Um, and then... Um, when you said 40 quarters, are we like three months out of the year quarters or like fiscal quarters? Um, I think they're calendar quarters. Okay. Calendar, I'm pretty sure they're okay. calendar yeah, quarters. Yeah, and it's like a, I a certain minimum of... of, of mm -hmm. okay. It's a certain minimum earnings you have to have. It's a very low dollar amount. I don't have it yeah. off the top of my head, but okay. we grab it. But but it's a minimal amount of earnings that you have to have to qualify, to, to earn a credit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have to be able to qualify yep. for social social security <laughs> before I worry about being able to take it. I Correct. mean, that's fair. Yeah. What else do I need to know about this? Um, uh, knowing when to take it, I think is important. Yeah. That I think a lot of uh, a lot of people don't understand. The, the reality is, social security system is really complex. It's um, there's a lot of there's just a lot of rules and regulations around it. Um, and so there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I think the most basic is just know what's, when is your full retirement age? And it's different for every person, depending on when, what year you were born. Um, what? you could be as early, you could take it as early as 65 and, or as late 62. as 67, 68, I guess. I mean, 62 is always the earliest, yeah, the but earliest. full retirement is a, can be a different age based on when you were born. And it's because they have a sliding scale yeah. that is moving full retirement back from what it used to be to 67 now yeah. is eventually everybody's going to be 67 until they change the rules. Yeah. Again. For me, it'll be 72. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But for, for right now, yeah, it's a sliding scale where it's 66 or as late as 67 in terms of that full retirement age. Okay. So so once I know my full retirement age then. That's full benefits. Okay. And then, so I always want to wait until I can get full benefits to start taking it? Well, the joke I always give everyone is I say, tell me when you'll die and I'll tell you when to file, right? Because ultimately, oh. since you don't know those kind of things, you're making an educated guess based on is it more important for me to receive a smaller benefit and file early, or should I try and wait for a larger benefit? But again, how long would I collect it? And the importance of that full retirement age is if you take it prior to that, there's a discount of 5% roughly. 6% six. a year they for every it. year before your full retirement. It's about a 6% discount to what your full amount would be. Yep. And once you file, you're locked filed. In. You're filed. Okay. That 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 amount is locked in. So, and alternatively, if yeah. you wait to file after the full retirement, then you get a seven percent increase. So it depends on your situation. Do I need income as soon as possible? 
I may have to file early to get it. If I can wait, sometimes it can make sense to grow that benefit. Okay, so you 8%. mentioned a 7%, 8% benefit? It's 8. Benefit? Eight. It's eight. eight. I'm eight. getting every number wrong. Here. That's okay. 8% <laughs> benefit if I wait to take it. 8% So if I wait higher. until I'm 100 because I'm um, going to live to be 120. <laughs> I wish. No? So no? the way it works is okay. at age 62 is the earliest you qualify. Okay. From 62 again to based on when you're born, let's call it 67 just in this example, that's your full retirement age. For every year prior to 67, as we stated, about a 6% discount, decrease. a 6% de decrease in terms of what you would receive. Once you get to full retirement, you get your full benefit. But if you want to continue to wait, you can. And as you continue to wait, it's an 8% increase from 67 until 70. At 70, oh. there's no longer an increase. You would likely want to turn it on at age 70 because you're just missing free money that you're eligible to get yep. that you probably should get. And we've seen it, right? We've yeah. seen people who yeah. haven't turned it on or didn't realize, and there's no benefit to delay beyond age 70. They thought okay. that it was going to continue to grow, like you were yeah, saying, yeah. if they wait until 80 or something like that, and that's just not the case. It stops at 70, so you want to turn it on at 70. Okay, so if I qualify mm -hmm. for... Social Security. <laughs> Got it. I want to take it out at, at least by the time I'm 70. Yes. Yeah. Never delay any longer than okay. that. And then again, okay. it's just an individual discussion in terms of when you think would be most appropriate prior to that. Okay. Because again, if you think you're going to live a very long time, then it could make sense to delay, get a larger benefit that you're going to be able to collect for a longer time period. But, you know, if, if maybe longevity is not in your genes or maybe there are health concerns or... Now, maybe just retirement comes quicker than you were anticipating. You may need to file yeah. earlier. Yeah. I saw this meme a couple of weeks ago, and I thought of you guys. I'm like, I, we probably need to show it on the <laughs> social screen, Social security Josh. memes? It wasn't a social <laughs> security meme. Um, and yes, I'm saying that slow. It was about retirement. It was this cute old couple, right? They waited until retirement to go to, um, what's the place in Italy with all the water? Venice? Oh, yeah. Venice. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And they're in the boat. Asleep. Asleep. <laughs> yeah. And the dude, like the gondola dude, is yeah. just sitting there smiling, yeah. like yeah. I don't yeah. know what to do with them. Know They're just <laughs> yeah. well, and I think I think that's, that's a great ad. that's a great yeah. read into honestly again when you file. Because I tell a lot of my clients that sometimes it doesn't like even if you do have longevity and you think there's a really good chance that by waiting you'll get more out of social security, sometimes it matters more when you get it. Can yeah. I go to Venice and not fall asleep? Maybe it's yeah. more important yeah. to go a little bit earlier so you can you can enjoy do it. some of those things and enjoy it. Yeah. 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 I had a meeting with a member just this week, same idea. We looked at it and he could wait and defer and make more, but he just said, I think I'll spend the money more when I'm 65 than when I'm 85. So mm -hmm. I'd rather have it sooner than later. And for him, it made sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So lots of things to consider. Yeah. So best thing probably to come meet with one of you Yeah. to talk through that. Yeah. yeah it, if the member meets with one of our advisors, they have tools where they can go through those scenarios with them to get to the member's unique situation to talk about. And I know Jared says it's his joke, but like um, no one really knows. And so we ask questions like, hey, how is your health? How was mom and dad's health? Just to get an idea of what's the family's genes and longevity and their health risk. Like, what's your health like, client? Mm -hmm. And um, and then we just start from there. OK, so. Aside from all that, how is this really calculated? Yeah, so what, what they do is the Social Security system, they look at the last uh, 40 years worth of your earnings and they drop off the bottom five. Okay. So then they look at the average of the th last 35, 35 years. Highest. Yeah, mm -hmm. 35 highest. Yeah. yeah, the 35 highest. And, and, th and that's a, a calculation that they run. And that's what your uh, primary insurance amount is when you're full retirement age. Okay. All right. So, so it, it is something that obviously if you pay more into the system, because it is looking at how much you were earning, right? Paying into the system. The more you pay in, the more you get out. Okay. More I pay in, the more I get out. So pretty much yeah. the more you earn, the more that you and your employer, because you know, when you pay into it and then your employer pays into it. If you're self-employed, that's what Jared's point earlier, they have to file their taxes so that they pay their full. Um, contribution. Yeah, they have to pay the employer portion in many instances, I shouldn't say for everyone's business, but the employer portion as well as their own employee. personal tax mm -hmm. employee person, uh, okay. portion. Yep. Yeah. In order to get full benefits by the time they're 
yeah. ready to yeah. take those. And a lot of it too, because you can go to Social Security's website, you can sign up for access and you can view that statement that they send you. I think nowadays it's like once every five years, unless you're close to retirement, they'll send it more more often. But you can go in there and you can get a readout of your historical earnings so yeah. you can mm -hmm. see. And this is something too that I talk to clients about before they file. I say, go get that and make sure the numbers on there look accurate. Um, it's very rare, but I have seen uh, members that have gone to file and have had an inaccuracy yep. in terms of their historical earnings. One uh, of which I can remember that there was a zero and they worked that year and they paid into social security, but it showed as a zero. So, uh, and, and think about it like a, I, I do anyway, is when I talk to clients about potentially what they could get, you can estimate it on the website and zeros can have an impact, right? So. Yeah. So if it's 35 years and you maybe have an early retirement or maybe you just had some years you weren't working or something, that can have an impact. And so, again, uh, either using, there's plenty of calculators, meeting with an advisor, um, mm -hmm. but lots of different ways you can gain a better understanding of what your potential benefit is. And then obviously the very complex question of when do you file? Okay. So... Let's just be real, though, Spencer. By the time Spencer and I retire, or by the time he retires, Social Security is going to be gone, right? Like it's running out. <laughs> Am I wrong? Uh, as it stands currently, you're not. But I think the reality okay. is we know the government has tools um, at its disposal to right that deficit that we're heading towards right now. Okay. Taxes, right? They can increase taxes right now. There's a cap on how much money you make where they stop. Uh, taxing additional funds for to go, go towards Social Security. Mm -hmm. So they have tools that they can take a look at to shore up that deficit and really extend it. The reality is there's so many people in our country that rely on that as their sole source of income. There's no way government can let that go to zero. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to go insolvent as of now. If the government, if politicians do nothing today, they're saying 2035. It's, yeah, it's funny yeah. to me that they put out a report. It's like every year we put out this report. It's like you're going to run out of money on this day. And we're like, yeah. oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. And when we do nothing about if it. it. Runs out, <laughs> if it runs out, it'll reduce about 25%. So whatever someone's full retirement benefit is, it'll be 25% less if they do nothing by 2020, 35. Yeah. But to Spencer's point, I just don't think there's a politician out there that wants to be in office and let that happen. Sure. I think it's almost 60 million, and I have to check the, the number, I think it's 60 million plus citizens depend on Social Security as their sole source of income. Yeah, yeah oh a portion goodness. of their income, yep. Yeah, okay. or yeah. a portion of their income. Yeah. And so um, I just don't think any politician wants to risk uh, their political futures um, on the entitlement system. The, they'll, they'll figure a way yeah. out. But to, to Spencer's point, they're going to either have to raise taxes or benefits are going to have to be reduced. Or uh, Jared and I were talking about prior to this um, that they're going to have to they're going to have to push our retirement ages out further. So instead yeah. of it yep. being 67, it might be 70, 72. Is what Spencer was joking earlier. But, it, w yeah. it was originally not intended to be a benefit that you would claim for 30 years, yeah. and that's sure. yeah. you know kind of what potentially with longevity increasing what social security is turning into. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I joke sometimes and I probably shouldn't put this on the airwaves here, but I joke that if, if, if I had, didn't have to deal with passing legislation to get things changed and I could just look at it mathematically as a problem to solve, I think I could probably solve writing social security's shortfall in a month, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, yeah. because the, the ways to do it, like they said, increasing the taxes, delaying the age in which you can file for Social Security, or reducing the benefit, or a combination thereof, you can probably figure it out. Yeah, that's okay. a very valid question. I, I mean, I get yeah. asked it all the time because it's a genuine concern people have. Uh, it's a headline everyone's seen, right? So yeah. there, there's a reason people ask about it, and th there will have to be changes made to keep pushing that yeah <laughs> that, yeah uh, draw down the, the other thing i'll say with this too because i i talk with a lot of younger clients too that they always say oh I, i'm not even planning on social security who cares about that yeah. and i stop them and i'm like don't say that loud enough because a politician one day is going to hear you <laughs> and uh mm. and and what i mean by that is i don't think people understand how important social security is in terms of retirement asset. Mm -hmm. And so to be so nonchalant about it for younger individuals and say like, oh, I don't, I don't care about, I don't need to plan on it. I'll figure it out without, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I think it's very important and we all should make sure that 
we fight to keep it. Okay. So yeah, yeah, younger people care about social, social security, run for office and make the change, right? right? That's what, that's what we need. That's what we need. Um, so one other question I have for you, and I often joke on this podcast in joke in scenarios and my poor husband takes the brunt of most of that. (laughs) So I'm not going to joke about divorcing him and not wanting him to get social security by the time I am ready to retire. So I'm going to delay that because that's not happening. Mm -hmm. He may die before me, but that is not going to happen. Um, we're not going to put that out there, right? Knock on wood. Knock on on wood. (laughs) Knock on wood. That's not going to happen. Brandon, don't leave me. Um, but Let's say, hypothetically, I was divorced, and I do not want that mm-hmm. ex-husband to get a dime of my social security. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to take it out till I'm 90. Is that what I should do? <laughs> so common. That is a common uh, scenario that we hear of people who are worried about that yeah. for all the emotional reasons, and we totally get it. Um, the interesting thing is that um, it, as long as you are married to that, that former spouse, that ex-spouse, for at least 10 years... Um, you could potentially um, take, get half, uh, apply through social security system, half of their social security benefit. They're still going to get their benefit, their, their, their full, full benefit. benefit. Yep. But if you, um, if their benefit, if if half of their benefit is higher than your benefit, you could potentially use their number to get your social security okay. benefit. But it doesn't affect their benefit. It doesn't reduce it. It doesn't hurt them. They won't even know. Oh, yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand that. They wouldn't good. even know. Okay. You're not stealing it from them. They're not stealing right, from you. It's just right. a benefit paid into the system. If it's higher than your own, you have the ability to step up to it. Okay. I, I can imagine the people at Social Security like, we don't want to have to deal with opening this can. So yes. the rules are oh, obviously okay. set in a way that taking a divorced benefit is not going to affect the other individual yeah. Yeah. and okay. their benefit. Yeah. So even though I may not have those qualifications – but my spouse that I was married to for 10 years mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. I can get benefits because of that. Mm-hmm. As long as you don't remarry. Oh, dear. <laughs> so again, this is, just emphasizing, <laughs> this is just emphasizing um, the, the complexity, uh, the complexity yeah. of the yeah. Social Security system. So okay. you can draw on a prior spouse's, a former spouse's benefit as long as you yourself haven't remarried. If you have remarried, then that option's not And if you benefit. remarry or remarry someone with an even larger Social Security benefit. Yeah, just make oh, sure okay. next one yeah. you marry has a bigger benefit. Lock in for ten okay. years. Then. And lock in for ten years. Okay, <laughs> exactly. all right. We're we're getting lots of advice. Yeah, here. yeah. Okay. marriage advice, everything. <laughs> one, one thing I will say, and I we didn't mention this when we talked earlier about when to file, but I think it's an important um, concept to understand, is because you have a, a a benefit for yourself, and if you're married, your spouse has either their own benefit or a spousal benefit. But when I do retirement planning, it's incredibly important to understand that at one point, one of you will pass away eventually. Um, and when you do, the larger of the two social security checks will remain, but you will lose a social security income. So okay. when we talked about when do I file and is it important in terms of when do I, a lot of that calculation can come into play because you could say, hey, if my benefit, let's just, I'm making this up, say my benefit's going to be 2,500 bucks and my wife's is going to be 1,300 bucks. And maybe if I wait though to file, it can go as high as 3,400. If I wait closer to that 70 or all the way to 270. Well, social security is a significant part of our income. And we're worried that when we lose one of those checks, maybe it makes sense for me to wait and delay on my own so I can get a larger and larger benefit. So that, uh, again, when someone passes away, we're losing maybe that smaller benefit called 1300, but the larger benefit there, 3500 would remain for the surviving spouse. Okay. And I think that's an important concept to brush on is the idea of a spousal benefit. A lot of people don't realize how this works. So Let's say, for example, I'm the breadwinner in my family and maybe my wife's a homemaker or works part time. Let's say fast forward to retirement. If my full retirement benefit for Social Security is 2000 a month and if my wife were to look at her own, maybe it's only 500 a month. She has the ability to step up to half of my benefit as hers. Doesn't reduce mine. I get my full benefit and she can step up to half of mine. So combine 3,000. That's it. Yep, that's so a spousal. lot of people don't realize that they can take advantage of the spousal. They think, hey, my husband made money and mine is really small. Yeah. If yours is small, you could take the larger of your own or your spouse who may be the breadwinner and, and have a larger benefit. Okay. You know, okay. I am sitting here listening to us and I and I and our comments about how convoluted and complex the social security system is. I think one of the, Jared said earlier a good suggestion 
is that if everyone just went to ssa.gov and created an account and downloaded their their statement, mm -hmm. okay. they would learn so much about mm -hmm. their social security benefit and the system. And I think that would be leaps and bounds, the most important things that yeah. they could do is just to get their social security benefit statement. They used to mail it to every American years ago. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, as the computers and they moved it all online. They stopped doing it, saved a little money that way, which was nice. Save the sure. trees, um, yeah, we get it. Yeah, yeah, we love the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, it, a lot of people don't know about the benefit and it's probably not, maybe for the younger generation, they're just like, that's probably why they think that yeah. is because it's not something that's, that you, you know, they're used to seeing. So I think that's probably the best advice yeah. I've been given. Um, I'm I mean, nowhere near retirement, but going yeah. and looking at the statement is probably. Yeah, and you're right. You don't have to be close to retirement to do it. You can go in there and see what your benefit looks like or what the estimated benefit will be like based off your current working history. And so, yeah, it's a couple page PDF, right? Yep. It's probably more like six or seven, but. I'd rather catch an error from two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And then when I'm. 70 and having to go back 30 yeah. years and fix sure. an error. So I think that's probably the best benefit. Yeah. Well, and I'm a geek and I joke about this stuff, but I told my wife the year that I had enough credits to qualify. Hey, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, every like, day, like yeah. I crossed that qualification line. So yeah. no matter what happens, I've already made it. They threw a party and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Okay. So SSA.gov? SSA.gov is the website. Okay. And then you can just create an account there. It's right on the main page. Okay. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Put it in the show notes. Smash that it. like button. You guys, <laughs> these, these, these are real podcasters. <laughs> we are not. They are. They are. So um, speaking of social security, I mm -hmm. think something that kind of goes hand in hand with that, maybe not, maybe, maybe I'm misspeaking there, Medicare. Yeah. What is yeah. what is Medicare? So Why do we all, need Medicare? Yeah, like all, the all of these dates. Uh, so we've talked about, you know, your full retirement age. If you wait till 70, it'll grow. If you take it as early as 62, you could. But another date that's important that people need to remember is age 65. Okay. Um, age 65 is when um, you, uh, American, can get Medicare eligible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can decide, depending on their work situation, if they're retired already by then or if they're not, they can compare you know, what does my work offer if they're still working in, as far as health insurance or if I go Medicare and which is the better option for my health? Mm -hmm. I just think it's really important that people, I think it's around 64, um, the Medicare system releases those Americans' information to insurance companies yeah. and they get bombarded by yes, a lot offers. of yeah. offers, emails, uh, phone mailers, calls. phone calls. Mm -hmm. Everyone feels every time we talk to somebody around 64, they're like, yep. oh, my gosh. What do I do? Like, what do I yeah. do? How do I stop yeah. this? Or what should I do for my Medicare option? Um, and so I think that's just another important date that okay. people need to remember is at age 65, you have to decide what you're going to do with your health insurance, whether you're going to use the Medicare or get it through another mm -hmm. another way. Okay. And it's a big part of retirement planning. I mean, yeah. if you look at your expenses even now, right? Healthcare costs make yeah. up a very large share of where you spend money. And so understanding how Medicare is going to fit into that in terms of your retirement picture is a, a big deal. And and it's another um, entitlement program that the federal government offers. And so again, it's there's a lot of complexity and choices and options there. And uh, what's nice about Mountain America is that we have Medicare specialists. Oh, that um, even that they're part an extension of our team. OK. And they really focus in on that area. And so if if there's a member or somebody that's just wants to review their health situation and where they're at, they can call our Medicare specialist and they'll go through their situation, and help them figure out what's the best yep. option, both in terms of their health, but also the dollar figures and how it fits into their retirement plan. And their their networks, you know, their doctors, yeah. their, you know, what's going to be important, which plan will work the best. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. great. They'll come into branches, meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, talk them through the options because it, it can be overwhelming, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of options, different plans, different benefits. So it's nice that we have people we can partner with to give our members more clarity and a better idea of what the future looks like. Awesome. Yep. And what's the cost to meet with one of them? Um, free to meet with them is free. <laughs> No, and they, yeah, they're they're yeah. free. And, free. Um, to meet with the uh, to meet with them and talk with them. Certainly, it, they um, Mountain America. We can make m money off of the plans, um, but we are not in it for that. Yeah, we know our members, and we've heard from our members for many years that our members need help because of how inundated they are, and um, the look of relief 
on our members' faces when we help them figure out, understand the Medicare system, and then um, which option is best for them. They are just so elated. And we get we get um, thank you cards and letters and emails from these members just just that are just so grateful that they were able to figure it out. So I can't under, underestimate uh, or understate the value of that, the, those people that help them out. 